again it's April here and welcome back to another video. Today I've got a video all about Neo Colours and Neo Pastels. Uh, maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. I use them a lot in my work and the probably the most questions I get recently anyway since I've been using a lot more of uh, the Neo Pastels especially is what are they, what's the difference between them, what are they made of, what colours do I like. So I thought hey why don't I just make a video, a little video, um, I'm not a Neo Colour or Neo Pastel expert, I have been using Neo Colours for about i say three years and Neo Pastels for about half a year, I don't know if I use them in a particularly like correct way, I don't know is there a correct, correct way to use art supplies, I don't think there is, I use them just how I like to use them so I thought that's what I'd show you and I'll try to answer some questions as best I could. I got some questions on Instagram so I'm going to kind of incorporate them throughout the video and then the ones that didn't fit in I will answer at the end. So let's begin, I guess the first thing we should talk about is what are Neo Colours and Neo Pastels? So both Neo Colours and Neo Pastels are made by Caran Dash which is a Swiss art material company and they are probably my favourite art company. Uh, I'm not sponsored yet but hey if anyone from Caran Dash is watching hit me up. So they make the lovely Caran Dash Luminance pencils which are my favourite pencils. They also make paints so I have the Caran Dash gouache like this little set here but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the Neo Pastels which is this little guy and the Neo Colour which is this guy. I'm gonna be chatting a bit about how I use them, what papers I like to use, my favourite colours, a lot of things like that but basically the shortest story of them all is that the Neo Colour is a wax based uh, crayon and then the Neo Pastel which is basically just like an oil pastel. I don't know why they have the word near at the front of them. I haven't quite figured that one out. If anyone knows, let me know. I think the best thing to do is show you some of my work that I've done with them and then we can kind of go into the more technical aspects. I started using Neo Color 2s maybe in 2020, 2021. Uh, this sketchbook has a lot of my sketches from when I was doing my 100 day challenge, which is when I was basically just drawing uh, part, you know, bits from my life. And I used Neo Colours a lot as kind of accents, to almost to pick up like bolder colours and also to use as texture. So you can kind of see here in the sky that I used it a lot as texture. On the birds I used it when I wanted a really bold bright colour to stand out because the pigment in them is a lot bolder than a coloured pencil. Uh, they're also really good for doing things like sky in between trees. This is when I started using it a lot in this sketchbook and uh, other ones directly after this is when I would draw trees and I would pop the Neo Colour in to kind of highlight the sky because again it's a super bold colour. They're very vibrant and they basically make any any image pop. Like here I haven't really used them much, I just used them on the side like this uh, to get some texture in the sky. And then we have a more recent sketchbook, this one here, where I've used a lot of the Neo Colours in the trees and in the sky to add texture, to pop colours out. And in this spread I've also used a little bit of Neo Pastel, which are these guys. So I've only just started putting Neo Pastel into mixed media work. It's uh, very new for me. Uh, I use Neo Colours a lot, but Neo Pastels I have just been using on their own. I've also used Neo Colours on their own before my project for Peach Tober last year I used just Neo Colours on their own and then I popped them into Procreate and tidied them up a little bit. So this is kind of an example of using them not as part of the mixed media. So the pigments are a lot darker, there's a lot more colours that kind of smush together, the texture's really waxy because obviously they're a wax crayon and it's just very very vibrant when you use them all together like this. It's really nice actually. And then for the Neo Pastels, I, like I mentioned, I just started putting them into mixed media, but I have been using them on their own for a few sketches, mainly for Odd Orange's art sessions. So Odd Orange is Morgan Grace. She has some art sessions that she runs every uh, every couple of weeks online. And I, I started using these just because I picked up maybe like five different Neo Pastels to give them a go. And I started using them uh, for her sessions and I just loved them so I just kept using them and I, I haven't stopped I'm just using them 
every session that she has. I just, and it's so nice at the end of the sketchbook to have uh, pages and pages filled up with the pastels because they're so lovely and vibrant. They're so fun to work with. So that is how I have been using them. The Neo colors I've been using a lot for mixed media pieces. The Neo pastels I've been using a lot on their own, but uh, I would like to use them in combination together eventually. So I have Neo Color 2s. This is what they look like when they're brand new. And basically I like to cut mine in half because I like to use mine on the side a lot like this. So I take the wrapper off, I cut them in half, I take the wrapper off, and then I pop them into these handy dandy tiny containers, which uh, if you would like your own, I don't know where you can get them in the world. <laughs> like if you can get them in every country but if you just search for tiny container you should be able to find them and I got these because I saw Melanie Chadwick use them and I thought they were super cute I put them in two colors so like reds browns yellows blues blacks grays and browns and greens and they do get really dirty in here which is the one thing that I actually really don't like so sometimes what I have to do is if I want to use them, I, oh sorry, this one, this one neocolor does not want to go back. I have a page at the back of my sketchbook and I just clean it off like this. Sometimes also I clean it off on a little bit of uh, like tissue, like, like here, I was trying to do it here. You can see it's, it's just torn it, but sometimes this works as well. Or sometimes I'll just go ahead and use the dirty bit and hope for the best. It's not the best way of storing them. I prob I don't think, I, I mean, I'm sure there's better ways of storing them. But yeah, this is just how I do it. And then when I go out to for plain air sketching, I empty one of these tins and I just take like five or six or eight or 11, <laughs> depending on what I'm feeling like. Um, and they just pack up and go in my backpack. So these are the Neocolor 2s. These guys are water soluble. So you can see here like some of the the dirt has kind of come off on here which isn't the best it's not like it's not it's not my favorite thing but these guys are water soluble so they can be used dry like this which is how i normally use them or with water so i don't normally use them with water just because i like to use them as the last thing rather than the first thing i have in the past used them with water before and then sketched over the top of them but i find I find that when I use them with water, unless you have a lot, like you really go for it like this, that they kind of get watered down a lot. And yeah, I just don't really like it. I'd rather use paint or my paint pens or something else than the Neo Color 2s. But I got them because I wanted to have the option to use them with water. So the Neo Color 1s, which are the non water soluble ones, I believe they are exactly the same except maybe there's a few less colors so i think the neo color ones have about 50 and then the neo color twos have about 84 and i don't know if all the colors i don't know what colors they do have what colors they don't have because i haven't really looked into it but i think they have a lot of similar colors so it really just depends if you want to use it with water or not the neo pastels i keep in this little bowl here i'm gonna have to get a bigger one soon probably but these guys look like this when you first buy them very nice and clean uh you can see the name on the side but over time when they've all been kind of uh sleeping together <laughs> living together they get very dirty just i mean you know they're pastels they just rub off this one here i can barely read the name so these guys have about 96 colors in. They also have very similar colors, which is another reason why I really like using these two, because then you can have the same color palette. So I'll try and find the same colors. So this is Jade. So this is the Jade in the Neo color. And then this is the Jade in the Neo pastel. And apart from the pastel being a tiny bit uh, desaturated they're basically the same color I'll see if I can find another one okay so that's salmon pink so this one's salmon pink that's salmon let's see if we can find a salmon pink because I know I have one so 
That's salmon pink. Okay, here we go. I found it. So this is salmon pink. As you can see, it's basically the same colour. Literally the only difference is the texture at this point. So I don't know if I can shine it like this. Maybe you can see it's a little bit more glossy. And this is, because this is wax, it's a little bit more glossy. This one's a tiny bit more matte. So yeah, that's one thing I really love about them is that they have very similar colours. So this is the Neo colour mix of water and one thing I tried when I got the Neo pastels was to see if that also mixed with water. <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, <laughs> it's a pastel. I think you have to use terps or some spirits or something with the Neo pastels if you want to, if you want to use them like that. So yeah. <laughs> they don't they don't mix with water so i think that's a good little overview of the differences between them i'm gonna show you now kind of how i like to use them and we'll answer some more of your questions and find out a little bit more about these wonderful little crayons or pastels depending on which one you buy maybe both get both they're both good okay bye so firstly, what do you draw on? I have found that the new colours and the new pastels, you can basically just draw on anything. I haven't tried wood yet, but I think they'll probably be pretty good on wood. I have used canvas board before and they work pretty well on canvas. And then of course there's my favourite paper. So the sketchbooks that I use the most, I'd say like 90% of the time, are the Royal Talons Art Creation sketchbooks. So this is a little cat that I drew and actually, this does have some neo color on I think so this actually also has some neo color on so sketchbook colors and the paper itself I mean a lot of you are probably familiar with these sketchbooks but just in case the paper is kind of it's, it's quite good it does work really well with mixed media you can't use like super a lot of um, water because it does crinkle the pages you might also tear through the page especially if you are impatient like me and you don't want to wait for things to dry but overall it's really good for mixed media in general and uh, neo, neo colors, neo pastels on their own. You can also use high quality sketchbooks. So I've got one from Odd Orange here which has a really lovely paper in. I also have this one here which is the Etcher sketchbook. Both quite pricey but you do get what you pay for. So they work really well with mixed media. I've already shown some of these but this is kind of like a mixed media piece with very minimal uh, neo colour on, but it's still there. And then I have a very recent odd orange session where I just use neo pastel. So that's a bit more pricier sketchbook paper. Then there is specific pastel paper that you can buy. So I got this for my birthday. It's the Strathmore pastel paper. And I've only used it with Neo Pastel so far. I haven't used it with Neo Color, but Neo Color is again, it's not really a pastel, it's more of a wax crayon. So I did this during one of our live streams that we have on YouTube here. And this pastel paper is beautiful. It also comes in like different colors. So that's a white one, but it also has brown and it's got gray, if I can find it. It's got kind of like a green and a blue. So yeah, this paper is really nice. It has a really nice tooth to it and it, like the texture of the pastels looks really nice on the pastel paper. So you can get some of your own paper. One thing about the oil pastels, the Neo pastels themselves, is that they are quite messy. Both of them do rub. The Neo colours and the Neo pastels kind of like rub or transfer, especially if you're in a sketchbook. Neo pastels do it a hell of a lot worse. So you might want to get yourself a fixative or pop some page, uh, pieces of paper in between your sketchbooks as you're working, which is what I do. And then one last thing, I did actually mention it, but I have also drawn on my sketchbook covers. I'm doing it more and more. This is my big A3 Moleskin one, and this one's super nice. I think this Moleskin paper is also quite nice paper. Here we go, this is like one of my favorite ones I've done. So it's a little possum with her, with her babies. And the Moleskin paper has quite a big texture, so it picks up all of the lovely Neo Colour um, there. Yeah. So that is what I like to draw on and use the Neo Colours and the Neo Pastels on, which is a whole, a whole bunch of paper, guys. <laughs> a whole bunch of paper.
So I did mention that they transfer quite a lot in a sketchbook and this is the Neopastels especially that I'm talking about. This is my main method of keeping my pages clean. It doesn't, it's not, doesn't really work very well. So basically when I'm drawing in a session, I'll pop pieces of paper in between. They are clean when they go in, they are not clean when they come out. So basically at the end of a session I'll have paper in between all of these and then I always say to myself I will fixative them but I don't I just take the paper out and I take photos of them for Instagram and then I pop my sketchbook closed and marks get everywhere I make the pages messy when I'm drawing I get it all over my desk as you can see I get it all over my hands on the side of my my hand here there's I'm sure there's ways to do it pop in I've heard of people popping like paper down and putting your hand there uh, just being you know less messy but guys I'm a messy person in like in my personality in real life and in art so for me um the sketchbook isn't I mean I do take print I do make some of these things into prints you know from my sketchbook I haven't done with the pastel drawings yet but I have done in the past and I just touch them up in photoshop it doesn't really bother me it does take a little bit extra time but for me the the process of using the sketchbook is the most important thing like being in the moment and drawing especially in these sessions where i'm chatting with people and it's really fun that's what brings me joy not having a beautiful clean artwork at the end although something like this which i really would love to turn into a print is kind of annoying because it did transfer and i'll just have to go into photoshop and clean that up a little bit so if you aren't like me and you would like to have everything nice and clean which i completely understand i'm just i'm just i don't have the patience guys you can use a fixative so i was using this fixative for a while it's the windsor newton fixative it just says uh drawings protects drawings from smudging and dust i found this didn't really do anything so i kind of stopped using it because i was just spraying it and things are still smudging maybe you have to do several layers i did like two or three layers sometimes and i don't know it just just didn't work that well then i got into neopastels and it really didn't work so i picked up this uh fixative which is the sennelier fixative it's the one that everyone talks about online they said it's really good is it really good <laughs> i don't know i haven't really used it i got it like three months ago and i i've been too lazy so I feel like I need to defend that last statement. Uh, in the last house, my art room was the you know, old dining room and it had these lovely patio doors that kind of opened out into the outside. Nice ventilated area. So I literally had to stand up, go outside and spray something and then it was done. But here I have to like get up and get all my stuff and walk down the stairs and go outside and when you like do a whole bunch of different sketches like 10 12 different pages in a row thinking about having to spray them and then wait for it to dry and then spray another one and wait for it to dry and spray another one and wait for it to dry hey i'd rather just leave them to get messy ah uh, i guess i haven't really defended myself very well i am pretty lazy anyway if you do want to spray uh this one i think i've sprayed a couple of them i haven't really used it much but i have sprayed a couple of pages and it does work pretty well so one more question I wanted to go through before we kind of move on is if I sharpen the uh, Neo colors. So Neo pastels, I don't believe you would need to sharpen them. They are, I mean, maybe you would actually. I have seen people do amazing realistic uh, oil pastel drawings, like portraits and landscapes and things. So I'm sure that you could. I actually have a Derwent pastel sharpener here. So I'm guessing that is for pastels. I don't know where I picked this up, I don't know why I picked it up, maybe I just wanted something for bigger pencils, but it's only just dawned on me now that you could use it for pastels. So yes, you can sharpen your pastels, I'm guessing. Should we just test it out? Let's give it a go. So I was actually in the Odd Orange session last week and she mentioned that she uses this sharpener, I believe, to sharpen her uh, Neo colours. That was Morgan. Um, so yeah, you ca it can sharpen new colors really well, but I actually never use the sharpener because I I tend to use mine on the side like I've shown, like I tend to use it like this probably about half the time. 
and the other time you can I kind of just move my crayon around until I can find like a thin edge if I need to like if, I, if I'm going to do some detail but if you do want to sharpen it if you do like to have that really nice sharp edge you can use the sharpener for that and let's see if I can find a near pastel I kind of almost don't want to sharpen my pastels because they're so pretty okay this doesn't go in it's too big so it's not going to work for the neo pastels you might need to get a bigger sharpener but honestly unless you're doing like really fine detail i wouldn't even worry about sharpening these because if you kind of move it around again you can get a thinner a thinner edge and most of the time well the way i use it most of the time i'm just kind of smushing things blending things in together like this so you know really i don't really find i need a very thin edge Another reason I don't shop in my Neo colours is because I thought it was quite wasteful. Like, they're not the cheapest crayon in the world. And I didn't like the idea of sharpening it and then wasting the shavings. I was watching a, a domestic course by Sarah Van Dongen, and I hope she's never going to see this video. So, but if she does, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. On her latest domestic course, she was mentioning that she sharpened her Neo colours and then she actually kept the shavings in little pots like colour coded so one was like lots of the reds and the oranges and the yellows and one was blues and stuff and then afterwards I guess she can like just sprinkle on the shavings and use them with water so I thought that was a really awesome tip to to use for the Neo colours if that's your thing but again I don't bother sharpening them I just like them blunt one more thing before we go I know I actually said one more question but there is another question someone asked and that was what I use over the top of the Neo pastels so the Neo pastels are the oil pastels again and I got this from another lovely Sarah Sarah Dyer I was watching one of her patrons I was watching one of her patron videos and she was using a pencil over the top of pastels and I thought that looked really cool so I gave it a go myself the pencil that I use is the Blackwing pencil it looks like this and someone asked me on Instagram what Blackwing pencil I used but I think Blackwing is the brand itself but you can use whatever pencil you have lying around the house uh, this is the cup I keep on my desk it's my lovely Digby cup that I painted myself at a pottery night and it's got all of my random pencils and pens and they don't really go anywhere so you can even use a cheap pencil like this the 2B or anything you have lying around the house really it doesn't work with colour pencil but graphite it, it does work with and what it seems to do is it like moves through <laughs> it moves through the oil pastels rather than going over the top of it it just kind of shoves the oil pastel out the way uh, but you can't really do that on neo colour very well so that brings me very nicely onto the next thing I want to talk to you about because I mainly do mixed media. I have used the Neo Colors on their own before and the Neo Pastels on their own, but I really, my real love is mixed media, putting it all together. So I've prepared a page and I kind of wanted to show you guys what you can put both of the Neo Colors and Neo Pastels over and what can go over them. So it's kind of like testing your materials and seeing like what you can do with them and then when you go into making your own mixed media spread or piece you can kind of plan ahead a tiny little bit or troubleshoot as you go so let's jump into the sketchbook and see how they layer the sketchbook is another royal talents art creations it's a4 and basically what i've done on the top is i've just popped a lot of the materials that i use plus a couple that i don't really so i've got a nice paint pen here some acrylic wash Ecoline marker, a pastel pencil, which is kind of like dry pastel pencil. Uh, it's it's like a it's like a soft pastel but in pencil form. Luminance pencil, a pan pastel, Crayola, which I never use, but I pop that in there. A uh, nice black, thick black marker, and then I also put the neo color and the neo pastel, so we can kind of see how they they go on each other. So let's pick two of the same color, so we can have a nice fair, even competition. Um, what did I find last time? All right, these colors are, are similar enough. So it's like an olive green. The one thing I actually don't like about the Neo pastels is when you've run, like when you've drawn all the way down to the paper, you have to tear the paper off and it always gets under my fingernails. Yeah, like look, I've got green fingers now. I haven't really used the Neo pastels much with mixed media but my guess is they're going to go on everything because 
they are basically pure I mean I don't really know what these guys are made of but a pure like pigment oil so it went over these guys very well now we're going to get on to the more textured material the pastel pencil it goes on very well luminance pencil again very well and now moving on to the pan pastel this is the one I was a bit concerned about because sometimes the pan pastel if it's a little bit thicker can clump up and it kind of repels material but that did really well goes super well over the crayon over the marker like guys it's just going to go over everything I think the the pastel the oil pastel is probably like the uh the champion of all art of all art supplies with the layering so I went over near pastel went over near pastel and near color now I'm going to move on to the near color I think the near color is going to do well with everything it might it might not do well with the pan pastel or the neo pastel but we'll see so near color up next so first thing that you can see from the neo color it does tend to have a little bit less pigment i think that's just i don't know why i mean i'm not an, i'm not a scientist but i think it's so my mum phoned uh so i i took the phone call and then and then i made dinner and then i then i ate dinner and now i'm back <laughs> so i can't remember what i was saying i think i was talking about how the neo color which is this one i'm using here looks like it's got less pigment or looks a little bit lighter than the oil pastel because i think the neo pastel gives more of itself to the page if that makes sense and you can actually kind of see here in the econ line i have to press quite hard to get it to go on like to cover it completely you can still see it coming through this is the pastel pencil so it still works pretty well I thought it wouldn't work there the luminance works very well I use this all the time as a combo this is the pan pastel this is the one I thought I'd have a problem with but I think it only has a problem if the pan pastel is really thick we got the Crayola which is another wax crayon not as high quality but you kind of see it coming through there the Crayola coming through black marker I always find the neo colors work really well on dark like the light works really well on dark you can kind of see it coming through a little bit there though the neo color on top of neo color so this does work when you have several neo colors on top like if you do three four five it does start to get like too much on the page so you can kind of see here the dark green showing a lot through the light green and finally neo color on neo pastel i am i am uh, wondering if this is gonna work it looks like it does could be lying though because it is the same color so let's try a different color it does work it's just not as pigmented because i think probably the oil in the neo pastel is is repelling the neo color so yeah that was just a quick look at how they layer and then i also want to show you quickly some pencil because i use pencil over the top of oil of the neo pastel but I don't use it over the top of the Neo Color. But this is the Blackburn pencil. So actually, you can kind of go over the Neo Color. Not as good as this. Like this here looks like you're just on the page. And that's because it picks up some of the, the oil pastel there and takes it with it. So colored pencil is something I actually haven't tried. So sometimes you can kind of draw on this, the Neo Color, like just a tiny, tiny little bit doesn't work that well and then over the neo pastel i think it's doing the same thing like just moving a little bit out of the way the way i use these two normally is they're the last layer on top of something so one of the questions i had was how to stop the colors from becoming too muddy so like i mentioned just now when you're sometimes layering especially the neo colors on top of each other it gets quite difficult so let's just do a little test with the neo colors so we'll do a dark blue and a light blue so maybe you're drawing the sky so if you draw it on quite light like this you can tend to layer on okay or blend it in okay so this blends in quite nicely like this and then as it gets thicker i find it a little bit harder to blend Kind of doesn't blend as smoothly on this side as it does on this side and then first to add another color on top 
this is where it becomes difficult. So it's like there's no paper or there's no texture for the Neo Color to hold on to. So it's just kind of sliding against, I find them sliding against each other. So I guess the way uh, to use the Neo Colors without it becoming muddy is to only use a couple in one area. If you're blending, to add keep it quite light to blend like this, like just very light and then you can come in with your other colour and you can blend it in. And then for the Neo Pastels, probably you would say the same thing. So I don't do too much blending with the Neo Pastels. Normally what I would do is I do a colour and then you can come in and you can do another colour. I do this quite a lot with dark to light, so helping it blend in like this. And then the more colours you add, obviously you probably wouldn't be adding all these colours on top of each other, but the more colours you add, the harder it becomes to kind of blend them or to see the individual colours, just because there's so much going on. Like, that's just a big mess there. So again, to stop them from becoming muddy, I would probably only try and blend a couple of colours together and also probably have them quite close in like the families I guess so blues with blues with purple would blend quite nice but then like a purple I mean this could be nice you know it's with a green probably would wouldn't blend as well I mean it does blend you get a kind of strange color in between and I also use white a lot actually for doing things like this especially in backgrounds so say I want to have a nice blue background, you can kind of pop it on really lightly like this. So you can see a lot of the texture of the paper through. Then you can take the white and you can use more of the white to kind of blend it. And I do that quite a bit on like backgrounds. And you can go around the edges of things. So it's kind of like half on, half off. Just play around with it really. This is what I'd do. I just literally open a sketchbook or get a piece of paper. Just have a play. You can either have a play by doing nothing or you can have a play with uh, a reference image by copying something. So yeah, keep the colours, I guess. Try and minimise how many colours you pop on top um, of each other just because it gets harder as the more colours that you try and put on top of each other. So another question I got was the near pastels in comparison to another pastel. So like I mentioned, I haven't been using um, near pastels or oil pastels for very long, probably just under a year, eight months, nine months. So I do have a review of the three oil pastels that I do have, the neo pastels, the del green pastels, and the Paul Rubens pastels. I have the, that in my last vlog, which is the catch up vlog. So I'll leave that in the description in case you wanna uh, see more about that. But I, short review, I really love the Neo pastels. I think they're better than the other pastels I have. Sorry, other pastels. <laughs> a very similar question, uh, Neo colors compared to other wax crayons. The only other wax crayons I have are Crayola crayons, which are like the crayons everyone knows from their childhood. They aren't professional, they aren't water soluble. I, I don't even know if there are like more, I'm sure there are like other wax pencil, like wax crayons that are water soluble that are the same level as the Caran Dash Neo Colors, but I haven't tried them, so I wouldn't know. But if you have tried some other ones, let us know in the comments so we can check them out. And then the last question I wanted to answer before I do a little drawing demo is someone asked me my top three and my top five colours. So I'm just going to have a quick scrummage through my Neo Colours and I will let you know. I think I have some ideas, but I may have to do some pruning. Alright, I think I've narrowed it down to five. It's quite difficult. I basically just went with the ones I use the most. So, Neo Colours first. There's Jade. I don't know if I'm going to remember all these colours, but Jade, there's Light Cobalt Blue, which is a lovely sky one, there's Salmon, yeah, Salmon, Salmon Pink, which is just a bit pinker, and Olive Green, or Khaki Green, I always forget, this green here, that's quite a nice little colour palette, 
And then for the Neo pastels, pretty much the same with a small, small change. So there's Jade. I don't have as many Neo pastels, so that's why. Uh, there's, so there's this light pink one, which I actually have, I don't know what it is. I think it's Granite Rose, maybe. It's kind of like a nice gray, like really um, muted pink. This one here, which is Salmon. Uh, this one here, which is amazing. It's lemon yellow, but it's like the super bright yellow. And then lastly is Olive Green. I think this is olive, olive yellow actually, but basically this kind of olivey color. So yeah, those are my favorite colors if I had to pick. So that was kind of an overview of the two and I think I answered all the questions. If you guys have any extra questions, ask me below and I'll see if I can answer them for you. But I also did a few speed drawings, paintings, they weren't, well, they had some paint in them, to show you how I use them, like kind of the process of it. And I also tried a new process. So I'm gonna go now and let voiceover April take it away and I'll see you at the end of the video. So I wanted to show you guys a full process of how I kind of do mixed media sketches in my sketchbooks because I know this video is about neo colors and neo pastels, but to be honest, the most times I use neo colors, especially is with mixed media stuff. So yeah, hopefully this um, shows you a little bit more about my process. Someone asked if I use line first. I actually rarely use line. Uh, I only really use line if it, I'm doing characters because I'm not very good with drawing characters. So when I was doing Peach Toba last year, I did a lot of uh, line art. Well, not line art, but I did a lot of sketching to get the characters right and then I would pencil it out into my sketchbook. But when I just do like landscapes or even animals, I don't use line. I just go in with the shapes first, which is why I like using paint or paint pens to kind of black out the shapes. And then I go in and do the details afterwards. This does mean that things get wonky sometimes, that they're not super correct, but I'm not really worried about that so much. For me, my sketchbook especially is just kind of a place to play, to use materials, to have fun, um, to experiment. And if things turn out a little bit wonky, sometimes it just adds a little bit of charm to it. So basically I'm kind of speeding through this, but I just wanted to show you kind of how I layer things up. So I was using the to begin with, I was using the um, the paints, <laughs> I forgot the name of them, uh, the Gandai Tambi Art Deco paints. And on this one, I don't use any paint pen. And the reason why I did two pages on the left and on the right is because on this one, I drew the house too big and I couldn't fit the tree in. And I really wanted to fit that tree in. So this photo was from a park in Carlisle that we went to, this house. I guess it used to be like either a house or a cafe or something and it looks abandoned it was all boarded shut but I just really loved it so that's what I'm drawing so yeah I did paint and then pencil and now I'm doing neo color so this is kind of the the process that I would use and I'm using the neo color in two different ways one is like this just with the tip so to do detail or to do um, you know just like bushes trees coloring in between stuff add in bolder color and then the other way is to do it on its side which is what I'm doing here although this pencil is this neo color is so tiny now it's getting hard to use but I put it on the side to get kind of like a bigger area or to show the texture and I also like to add on like shapes or colors that aren't there so this pink wasn't in the picture but I just felt like it needed something to balance it out a bit and now we're actually going back in time so I'm doing the page on the right here, I wanted to add that tree in. And on this one, I also wanted to show me using paint pens. I didn't do that on the previous image, but I really like using paint pens um, a lot. I love how bold they are, and I also really love how vibrant they are. Like, look at this neo pink one, it's crazy. Uh, I use these a lot when I'm out doing plein air sketching because they're easier to carry than paint and they dry quite fast. And the, the shapes that they give you, they're not always accurate because the paint pens I use, especially the 50 millimeter ones are so thick that it's kind of hard to get like super fine detail, which is what I like. I mean, by the time you add in all the different layers, you kind of don't really see the shape of the paint pen or like, unless you really want that. So um, yeah, I added, I added some kind of strange colors here, the neon pink especially, it was a bit weird. 
Um, and this one also I wanted to do, I figured since we're doing mixed media, might as well add in the Neo Pastels. But before then, <laughs> I got to add in the Neo Colours just to kind of uh, soften that sky because the sky was a little bit harsh with the paint pens there. So I'm going in just filling in the um, gaps in the trees and then I go in with the Neo Pastels. So I haven't actually used the Neo Pastels on mixed media before. This is literally the first time that, that I'm using them. They very similar to me using them to... The, to the Neo um, colors when I'm using them like this because I'm not layering them, I'm not using a lot of color, I'm just using them as an accent or as a pop or to make something a little bit bolder. So the way that I use the Neo colors and the Neo pastels in mixed media is not really, they're not really the main course, they're kind of like a side dish, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and just to complement the image. And I guess most of the work gets done with the paint, like blocking out the shapes and the pencil. And then the ne Neo Color or the Neo Pastel will kind of be like the cherry on top. A lot of food analogies. It's getting close to lunch, so I'm getting pretty hungry. <laughs> but yeah, I especially love this bright, bright yellow Neo Pastel color. It's called, I think it's the lemon yellow one, and it's so vibrant. I love it so much. And adding some white in there, um, kind of regret, I didn't know. The roof didn't really need a highlight, so I think I got rid of it. Yeah, I just kind of smushed it in there with some more paint pen. And lastly, going over with the graphite pencil. I don't normally do this in mixed media either, but the graphite pencil is literally the only pencil that goes over oil pastel. So just popping some little lines in there and calling it a day. So that was kind of how I used the Neo Colors and the Neo Pastels in mixed media. And I think next I'm going to show you just how I use the Neo Pastels on their own, because that is what I love to do as well. So just getting some close-up shots there so you can see all the lovely texture. So the Neo Pastels are the ones that I use on their own a lot. Like I mentioned earlier, I use them for um, the odd orange sessions. I have done a few little birds for myself. This time I thought I would try to do that house again. I think I'm doing that house again. Or maybe this is a different house. It looks different. But I did, I did a house anyway because I thought that would kind of match the other... Um, the other two that I did and I haven't done much landscapes or like mini houses with this style I think it is the same house actually but yeah it was super fun I want to do this again um, I actually have a whole bunch of neopastels that I got for my birthday if you can believe it on June the 9th was my birthday and I haven't opened them yet I haven't opened any of my birthday stuff that I got from Jackson's Art I got a voucher um, I just have been, I've been so busy and I've been doing other stuff too. I've been doing a lot of like hiking and outdoor stuff. I've been going to the gym. I've been really trying to focus on my health the last few months. And I've kind of been putting art a little bit on the back burner just to, there's only so much time in the day. So I've been kind of doing like more, if I only have an hour in the day, I'll do exercise rather than art. Um, but it was really nice just to sit down and do these like super chill sketchbook sessions and doing this with the oil pastels in my sketchbook and like not part of a session, not not using other people's prompts, just kind of drawing uh, what I wanted with them. It was actually super, like super freeing and really lovely. And this was probably my favorite sketch out of the three, even though it was all just oil pastels. Um, anyway, I think I was talking about the new oil pastels I got because I was gonna say I don't have many colors. I actually do have a lot of colors, but I have about 12 more that I got that I haven't popped into this into this this set yet and I think one of the really good things about just starting off with a new art supply if you do it how I like to do it which is you just get a few because when I was first drawing I was getting super excited about art supplies and for example I got a 300 set of um, pencils it was the Faber-Castell pencils it was on a Black Friday sale about a year into drawing 300 pencils guys I don't think we need 300 colors I do not use half of them a lot of them I don't use and I've done that before I've gotten sets and I just don't use them and I think now the best way well the way that I prefer is just to get maybe four or five of something and just play with it and see if you like it and that's what I did with the Neo Pastels when I first started for about three months I just had like five or six colors and the thing about that is if you pick colors that you really love or colors that go together that well as palette um, you can get some really beautiful drawings and the more colors you add in, it's like the more choice you have. And sometimes it kind of messes it up a little bit. Like you, you maybe choose, you want to add all the colors. So maybe you put colors in that don't really go well together. 
Uh, so even though I do have quite a lot of neo colors and neo pastels, I do find that I always tend to use about the same 10 different colors, which I think is fine. And I do think it's nice to get new art supplies. Like just buying new art supplies is lovely. <laughs> like don't get me wrong, I love it. Um, it's nice to try new things too, because you might find a color that you really love. But yeah, I probably don't need all these all these colors. Let's be honest. <laughs> who needs who needs all these art supplies really? But you can probably just do with you know three or four different colors and. There's that challenge, that three color challenge. I, I failed it. I can't do it. So I'm going to say at least 10 colors I need. Um, so yeah, I don't think I went overboard with the colors here. I think I probably, I used quite a good selection. I really like how it turned out. If I was to change anything, it'd probably be the sky. I probably wouldn't make it as blue. I'd make it like a little bit more gray. So I don't know, maybe, but it was fun. It was a fun little sketch. Um, and I completely forgot to tell you about the process. I was just using the pastels. I don't really know what else to say. I think I've kind of gone over it um, previously in the video, how I used it, and just going over and adding all the detail with the graphite pencil. And I will spray this, I haven't yet, but I will spray it to protect it. So that was the process, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So that was the video. I don't know if I um, managed to answer all of the questions or if I missed anything out. I probably did. So yeah, definitely let me know if you have any extra questions. Let me know how you guys use your Neo Pastels or your Neo Colors, because I'm sure there's lots of different ways to use them. It'd be really interesting to learn some new techniques maybe that I could try in the future. That's all for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a lovely rest of your day or your week and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.